back again with another cozy Corona home meal. My friend sent me another Quora article. I'm not purposely looking for these things, by the way. I'm just like getting sent some stuff, and I'm like, oh wow, you know, this is this is an interesting topic. Let's talk about it. So here we are again, cozy Corona Chronicles at home, featuring new Korean food. In particular, today we have bibimbap. Why bibimbap? Well. I really miss eating rice and vegetables, but I also think that for Filipinos who live in Manila, bibimbap is one of the most recognized Korean foods. Just wanted to keep it familiar. Just to give some context, bibimbap is a mix of two words, bibim, which means to mix, and then bap, which just means rice. So mixed rice, literally. <laughs> also, I love bibimbap because like so many vegetables, it feels very healthy. My body feels nourished. The article I found on Quora again is what the Filipinos do well. So it's nothing, you know, racially insensitive. Maybe it could be racially insensitive, who knows? I'll find out. I haven't looked at this yet, so it's a, it's a fresh react. One of the first things I see, which is the tip pin top answer, is humor. This is actually really funny, because as I was saying in the previous video on what do South Koreans think of the Philippines or Filipinos, you know, I've, I've been living there for 10 months. My perception has grown so much. So many different aspects of Filipino life and culture and how we like adapt. I can't speak for it as a whole because, you know, I'm still trying to become more of Chad the Filipino, but from my own anecdotal experiences, but this first fun humor, I'd have to say that's true. In the Philippines, there was a huge typhoon called y Yolanda. Obviously, this is like a very perilous situation where like your life's on the line and you might, you know, your home is wrecked, you have nowhere to go. When they saw like helicopters fly by, the people who were like, you know, stranded, they like started cheering and like waving and like, Ooh. It's funny because they have like this um, Olympics image with like China, France, Japan, Russia, US, and the Philippines and like everyone's like doing this intense Olympic swimming pose but for the Philippines it's like a guy not even in proper swimming attire with like no hat or goggles and he's just like swimming. <laughs> Adaptability. The second point this person, the same person brings up is adaptability. Adaptability slash resourcefulness is what I would say. And, you know, of course this can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing, is, and I agree with what she's saying too. Uh, she basically is bringing up a story where a Punoi was interviewed after the house had been flooded during a typhoon. The person's answer was, prepare for my shiri Tagalog, sanai na po kami, which means like we're, we're already used to it. It's, it's positive, but it can also be like kind of negative too, because it kind of had like a defeatist personality about it. Talking to other friends, there are situations where like, because we're so adaptable, or resourceful to, it kind of comes at the cost of being really efficient. M maybe we're kind of stubborn about that too. I think I agree, it has pros and cons. It really just depends on the context. The third thing she brings up is family ties and respect. I wanna say, yeah, like even growing up in the, in the States, family parties would be so big. I would have like parties for everyone on my mom's side of the family and parties for everyone on my dad's side of the family. Even going back to the Philippines, one thing I never really did much as a Philam is like sagad my elders or like bless them like this. Doing this to your elders is like a sign of respect that really shows how much it's integrated into our, our, our culture. And also like Sundays are very like family days in the Philippines. So like when I first moved, I was so lonely because I had like very little friends. And so Sundays were always just like watching families hang out and me just being alone, eating lunch or drinking coffee. The fifth thing she brings up is boxing, MMA, singing, and beauty contests. I'm just gonna say like Manny Pacquiao does not, just because we have one guy doesn't mean we do that well. Statistically speaking from a science perspective, our sample size is not large enough for us to objectively say we do something well. No offense, but it's just like... But on ter in terms of like singing, there are so many like talented Filipino singers like AJ Rafael. You know, like this whole YouTube era, era when I was like in high school, so many Filipino singers. I agree. Also, if people are wondering why I'm eating like bibimbap out of this container, it's because I didn't really want to wash dishes for a bowl. I'm seeing like a common answer. It's basically like hospitality and we are so hospitable. I think I mentioned this in, in our previous video, but like my parents would stuff all my friends with so much food and you, you feel so like welcome. And like when I first moved and I started, you know, connecting with distant family and relatives, even though they only knew of me through stories my dad would tell of me, I still felt very received, well received and cared for, even though it was like their first time meeting me. So I think in general, we are very hospitable. This kind of relates to um, one point that I made in a previous video, like Filipinos are lazy. This guy, I'm just gonna say he's engaged to a Filipina, but one thing he says that we do well is hard work. And coming from an observer, you know, he can see how much work we put in. 
so props to you. Thank you. This is an answer from like a born and bred Filipino. Her last thing she's saying is that the Philippine spirit is resilient and beautiful. And you know, I, I agree for sure. She brings up all these points of being colonized by various nations and having been enriched rather than defeated by their influence and during devastating natural calamities and then coming out with it with a smile, which is true, enduring poverty, enduring corrupted governments. These are things that I fortunately did not have to experience because I you know, was raised in America. I can agree with what she's saying. The Filipino spirit is resilient. Even though we've you know, endured colonization by various nations, I agree with the enrichment. Some people may think that the Philippines is kind of confusing because there's so many different influences from like Chinese, Spanish, American, sometimes Japanese, and then mixed with our own local indigenous tribes of Philippine culture. It makes it very difficult to understand and kind of like unify and portray. But for me personally, I think this is like a freaking great thing because it just really shows how much we have to offer and how complex our nation is. It's really like unknown how much unique, cool stuff we have, particularly in, in terms of food too, which is what I'm trying to you know, reveal more about and show everyone. Different Filipina, born and bred. I really love arts. I used to play jazz trombone. This cool, this response by a person is basically listing out all these different kinds of fine arts that we have because I still am trying to learn about and find these things. So this is like a cool resource. And I hope that other people, Filipinos too, would be interested in looking these people up and checking them out. Hey, here's, here's, a, here's a good answer. This is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. This is a Filipino born and bred who's had the opportunity to travel and interact with different cultures from all over the world. And he's saying Filipinos cook some really good dishes. And he's not talking about like normal stuff either, like bulut or sisig. Wow, this is great. This is great. He's talking about like different types of lechon. Lechon is like super regional. The most famous one is in like Cebu. You know, every region has their own lechon. I'm not gonna say anything because I might like dig myself into like my own grave if I proclaim any biases. They're all good. That's all I want to say. He's also talking about like local craft beers and single origin coffee. Hell yeah. Craft beers are definitely a growing thing in Manila. I'm seeing that for sure. It's still like a small growing market, but definitely seeing a lot of craft breweries popping up. And single origin coffee, you already know, like, hit me up. I can vomit out so many single origin coffee roasters in the Philippines that make good quality stuff. If you make good quality coffee too, and you're watching this, and you're from the Philippines, hit me up. I'm totally down to try it. Ooh, here we go, here we go. Actually, this is, this is a good one. I don't really know if it's something we do well, but it's just that Filipinos are mostly bilingual. Very true. We speak Tagalog, some Spanish, but also English because of history. Just to bring it back to a larger level, because we have so many different tribes, and like languages themselves in the Philippines. I think like our brains, like scientifically, they are just more developed and like conducive towards learning more languages or, you know, I used to read like a lot of neurolinguistics. So I definitely believe that there's definitely some advantages in being, you know, bilingual or multilingual from birth. I don't know if this is something Filipinos do well or rather like the Philippines can grow well, but this guy is saying, Mangoes. We have the best mangoes in the world and they don't do well for mass export. Um, I'm just gonna say, I fucking agree with this guy so much. So my dad actually has a mango farm in Bulacan. He grows Carabao mangoes and like Indian mangoes. And then there's Gimaras. Gimaras is the really, really hype ones. And I think those are the ones that we mostly export because they're like the highest value. They are so sweet. It's like natural custard, creme brulee, silky, honey. It's like so intense and like complex in flavor. It's crazy. And then like my dad's Carabao mangoes are like the same thing. They're just like freaking huge. Like the size of my the size of my face. So good. Philippine mango if you don't like mangoes, just come to the Philippines and like try it out. Things Filipinos do well is cook really good food, super hospitable, family reverence, and then are very optimistic. Yeah, being like an optimistic bunch of people, again referencing Typhoon Yolanda. Yeah, yeah. So even this person saying that after the Philippines was struck by Yolanda. A news article came up saying Filipinos were one of the most optimistic people in Asia. I, I'd say I, I agree with these things. I agree with these things, especially especially the food. We cook some lit stuff. Filipino food is lit. Come through. Show you. I'll show you around. And I'm still on my journey to find out all the lit stuff we cook. Anyway, I'm gonna finish my lunch. Thank you for watching. If you are curious of anything else that Filipinos do well, like ask in the comments, like hit me up. What are some things that your country does well? I'm always curious to learn about other cultures. So, you know, this is Chad the Filipino, signing out, eating bibimbap.